Hey, what's going on, everybody? Movie Phantom here, and guess what? It's Friday, yeah. and oh, Maya. <laughs> it's been a long day. Uh, it's Friday, and you know what? Today I am doing, or tonight, as it is, uh, we are doing the 30th Wolfman's Top 5. And his uh, Top 5 this week was Top 5 Movie Editions that you have. That seems like more than 5. I'm getting to it. Don't be judging just yet. Don't you worry about it. Um, he said movie editions. And that kind of threw me off for a second because I was like, like, don't get me wrong. I love, I love Pulp Fiction. And I got like the two discs, three discs, whatever. But I'm like, I never really fuck with anything else on there but the movie. Like, I could have just got a Bare Bones. Because I've only seen this, you know, and that's the way most of my features are. I just watch them once and then for the most part, that's it. Like you can literally go through my entire collection and take all the big special editions out, throw in bare bones movies, and then you're just left. With, and I'd be I'd be okay with that. I really would be. Uh, and then I was like, all right, well, we can't just talk, you know, my top five movies because it's just like, yeah. So I started thinking, I was like, well, what? When I'm looking at this thing, you know, I'm looking at my collection. I'm like, well, what movies? Like, what? Which which box sets am I proud of, or am I really that love? And then I'm like, all right, I got it now. Like, I, I get it. Uh, so I explained it to her, and she kind of did the same thing. She didn't quite, but, uh, <laughs> you, 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 uh, Maya, go ahead. Go first. I'll let you go first. Okay. Because you could have done what I did, but I'll let you do it. Twilight, so. not Twilight, but Pearl Liars, one through four. Now, see, I was going to say, I got one TV series, too, but I just busted one out, and I'm going to just encompass the whole thing. So you could have just done that, like, Pearl Liars. Yeah, one through four. All right. And, or not five, Blood In, Blood Out. Blood In, Blood Out. Yeah. That was one you try to find forever. Yeah. Right, yeah. So, I was like, alright, so what editions do I have that I just suck off hardcore? And it took me forever just to get it. Yeah, and I remember you, you literally didn't have it for a long time. The only thing you could find was the director's cut. And, and then, when I, they sent it to me, they sent it to mom's house. Like, um, I go, mom did, my mom didn't get it. I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> Didn't your sister have it, something like that? When, just, he, when his sister found it. Yeah. And she took it home. And, did she watch it? No, she found it um, in, in the dress store. In my old bedroom. Um, so I was like, all right. So I went through and came out of, like, you know, I guess the five that... I guess the five that I'd be more heartbroken if I lost. Because I feel like everything else you can replace on the cheap pretty quickly. Wouldn't be that bad. Um... And now, you know, Netflix, like, fuck, I can just Netflix these motherfuckers. But I was like, all right, here, here's, the, here's, the, here's the five. Now, I did throw in a sixth one. Now, th this box set itself, or the movies, aren't that great. It is the Sons of Kong, like, ten, eight movies on uh, three DVDs. And don't get me wrong, there's a couple that I think are okay. Uh, Bela Lugosi meets the Brooklyn uh, Gorilla. I like it. And then whichever one has the Rich Brothers in it, I like that one. The rest of, oh, and Law of the Jungle, but the rest of them are kind of, eh. Uh, but what makes this really stand out for me was this ridiculous. This is why I bought it. No, I didn't buy it. It was, a. Uh, I was going to buy it. And I was like, man, I don't want to spend it. Because it was initially like 20 bucks. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, 20 bucks for this. Because this is, this is a 2005 when King Kong came out. And they tried to capitalize on it. Uh, and I was like, I ain't spent 20 bucks on these 10 books. And it didn't, you can just tell they were just going to be a bunch of public domain garbage. you know. And for the most part, they are. Uh, and I was like, nah, I ain't doing it. And I kept noticing that throughout the year, the price kept dropping to the point that it, then it became, if you make a $10 purchase, purchase, uh, you could get this for free. And that's what I did. So I actually got this for free. But the reason I like this, and this ain't part of my top five. I'm cheating a little bit. I'm sorry, but please forgive me. Uh, because it's a pop-up. Look at that. I don't see it. Ah. Yeah. I don't know if it's picking up good on the camera or not. It's a pop-up. Literally, the, the, the actual casing is better than the, the movies for the most part. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's that one. But to my official top five, now these I typically do go in order. Here, I don't really have an order. I just kind of grabbed them. I mean, don't get me wrong, I was going through a process. I had like 20 picked down. I kept pushing them you know, back. These are the five that survived. Uh... Up first, I love this. This is the Alfred Hitchcock, the Masterpiece Collection. Uh, shit, it has like 14, 14, yeah, 14 films. 
Uh, and this is all more of his later ones. Leather too. Oh no, yeah, it has like a velvet feel to it and everything else. Oh no, it's a nice. And the reason I'm picking this, not just because it has 14 movies, and they're all fucking great. All for most part, most of them are great. Uh, but it actually does. It has a, you know a 36 page booklet, which is really insightful. Like it's really neat. And it's one of the few that I can actually kind of pull out periodically and just kind of thumb through it, like as I'm watching one of the movies. Uh, it includes all my favorites: uh, Rope, The Birds, Psycho. Uh, Trouble of Harry, uh, Torn Curtain, which got a lot of shit back in the day. I think it's a fantastic movie, and Totaz, which is another one that gets shit on a lot. And I thought it was great. Uh, it, you know, it does have some I didn't care for that are you know considered greats, like Marnie. I wasn't big on Marnie. Uh, trying to look back, I'm trying to top of my head. Uh, Vertigo. That's another one, like, classic. I just didn't care for it. Uh, has the the man who knew too much, the the remake. And then it has uh, his last two, Frenzy, which is excellent, and a family plot, which is really good, too. So, uh, yeah, no, this is just one of my favorites right here, so. And I got it pretty cheap now that I'm thinking about it. Like, I mean, I know when it first came out, it was, like, upwards of, like, 80 or 90 bucks for the DVD. This is, you know, and I got it for 40-something, maybe? So, not too shabby. All right, I'm a big Sherlock Holmes fan. Uh, was really big on the... Uh, Really, you know, initially what got me into it, actually, uh, the cheap dollar public domain DVDs, but they were uh, the TV series with uh, Ronald Howard, not to be confused with Richard Cunningham, uh, but uh, what and loved them. I was like, holy shit. And I remember I watched a couple of, uh, they, they showed me a couple in school, uh, the Bas or, uh, Basil Rathbone, born, bone. and uh, it's a long day. And uh, anyway, so then I started going back and watching those again, and I was like, oh, these are great. But then I came across this. And this is the Jeremy Brett, uh, and he had like six, because you know the the British TV series go for like six episodes a season sometimes, or you know whatever. And but there's like six different seasons on this, and then there's like two movies, uh, all of uh, all of uh, Jeremy Brett on it, and dude, it's it's fantastic. And this DVD is great. I guess set. Like, I don't know how many DVDs is on here. It's like a shitload. Twelve, twelve discs, and like literally it's just it's jam packed full of just bonus features like that, and it also has a booklet. I've literally, I've gone through like two or three times. Like, I try, I try to pop something in. I just always like, well, let me just kind of, because it goes through episode by episode. Like, it actually has like a little story for episode, so, which is really neat. So, yeah, I definitely dig this. Big fan of this. So. It's a neat little box, too. So. It'll be a cunt now. I'm not going back in. There we go. All right, speaking of Britain, it's been all British so far. Even those are the American Hitchcock, still Hitchcock. Uh, the young ones. Literally one of my favorite, mm. you know what, actually, just one second here. Oh, fuck. That was a fatty grunt you just heard right there. I actually still have my old VHS, Kirk's Choice Video, uh, young ones here. And I just refused to get rid of it. Boom, right there. In fact, that probably could have made my list, actually. Not that I thought I'd watch them on VHS anymore, but... I love it so much, I kept it. That's the first season? The whole whole series. Uh, it went for two seasons. But see, there's seasons over there are like six episodes of PD. This is so. only... That's the same thing. That's every one of them. That's, it, it, that's this, you know, uh, you know this. Um, but yeah, no, I won this forever. And uh, it seemed like I could never find it cheap enough. And especially nowadays, like nowadays, I just refuse to pay more than... Like ten dollars a disc, like I just refused to. And like this was like, and this is only three discs, and this was like literally like sixty something. It's like fuck that. Like I love the show, but I ain't paying that much for it. I kept waiting for it to come down. Finally got me a copy, so boom, happy with that. Now this next one is just a bootleg, no fucking special features or nothing. Literally, you throw it on, you hit play, you go. But this movie, <coughs> excuse me, got dry mouth there, dry throat. This movie is a personal favorite of mine. That is this, it's so obscure and not too many people know about it. But it, and when I went to Days of the Dead the first year, uh, they were playing it at the film festival, and I was like, "Holy shit!" And I went there and checked it out. And then uh, I was walking That's around. The year I'm at Danny Yeah. And then we were uh, bumming around the uh, VHS PS uh, booth, and they had their shit set up like an old time uh, video uh, store. And I came across this, and my dick just started throbbing. Like, I was literally, I was shooting paint stains in my pants. That's how, uh, and the movie Surf 2. And once again, it's a, it's a really good uh, transfer. Like, for a bootleg, it's, it's perfect. So, yeah, fucking love it.
The only thing I don't like is the menu, the volume is so ridiculously high. Like the movie itself, I mean, there's no problem. I mean, it ain't too low knocked down. I mean, it's normal. But that menu is ear piercing. So I would, I remember for a phase where I was watching it a lot. Like I just, after I got it, I was like, oh shit. And then I would watch it and I'd, I'd, before I go to bed and I'd fall asleep and it'd be on. But then I'd be woke up by this, because it has a weird fucking like, I don't know, some kind of like laughter, and then it's just like this weird like surfer music. Uh, but yeah, every it time. It does, it does. And you're just like, holy shit. So yeah. So surf two. And finally, the last thing, I didn't bust them all out like she did, but uh, my Seinfelds. Uh, I have a lot of TV on DVD, and uh, they're all, and don't get me wrong, I mean, they're all great. But to me, this is the best because A, I think the special features are you know, second to none, really. I mean, they got everything you can think of in these things. And they're so, more, they're more informative. Like, I don't know, it just seems like they break down each episode. And I like that. Like, I don't know, I just kind of wish the other, you know, of course, the other ones haven't been out that long. That's another thing that kind of sucks is, like, they'll bust them out the next year after they release, and they don't put much into it. They're just like, well, here's a couple deleted scenes, and here's a little featurette we shot for, you know, Fox, and here we go. But here it's like they actually took time to go through it and you know give. And so I didn't want to bust all you know nine seasons out here in eight different box sets. But uh, yeah, Seinfeld, the entire series. So that's my that's my top five, my man. I hope that that works for that's you. Our top five. As our top five. So uh, yeah, uh, guys, check out Thirteen Fourth Man. Uh, I mean, at this point, if you're watching this show, there's no way you don't know who he is. But if that's the case, I'm leaving the link down below. He has fun shit like this all the time, and he just now brought back the question of the week, which we're going to do later, and the uh, top five, and he's doing that bi-weekly now, so, hey, twice a week, head on over there. And then, of course, he does stuff, you know, he does uh, the sit-down, uh, where he uh, interviews uh, directors, writers, actors, actresses, whatever, from the uh, world of indie horror, and that's always really good stuff. You get to see some insightful stuff there, and then, of course, he's, you know, doing little reviews here and there. A little bit of everything. So check him out. I know he'd appreciate it. Uh, yeah, that's all I got. Anything else to add? No. Was it really compelling? Yeah. Did it have epic storytelling? Yeah. I'm just reading the quotes on the back. It was a good movie, actually. All right. Uh, so for mine, I'm the movie Phantom, and uh, 